phone comes with the handset already plugged in, ready to go. We just need to take out the power adapter and our cables and get connected. Out of the box, quick installation, take your phone line if you're using one, plug it into the phone line port. Second step is to take our LAN cable and plug it in to the LAN port right here. Your PC will plug into the second port. Finally, plug the power into the phone. And the phone starts to boot up. As the phone lights up, it's going to give us the IP address to go to to configure the phone through your web browser. This is what the phone screen should look like after it boots up and you're ready to start. We're going to go to our browser and enter the IP address shown on the phone to get started with the wizard. In just a few quick steps, we'll have the phone up and running. First thing we need to do is assign a workgroup key to the phone. This needs to be a secure password that the phones will use to recognize each other, and it is case sensitive, so you'll want to write it down. Second step is to assign a name to this extension. We'll put in my phone. Our extension number can be from one to four digits long. We're going to assign 111 to this phone. Next step is to choose whether or not to have copies of your voicemail sent to your email account. We're going to say yes and send something over to my account at example.com. Next we'll decide if we're going to have a landline connected to this phone directly. We're going to configure one now and give it the name line one. The next step is to decide whether or not to have an auto attendant answer our calls. We're going to turn the auto attendant on and then configure the settings. If I leave it at two rings, my phone won't ring and the auto attendant will pick up right away. I'm going to set it to five rings so I have three rings to try to answer it live before it goes to the auto attendant. I am going to have connect phones at more than one location, so I'm going to click yes to support multi-site operation. And now we get to define how our landline behaves. Since we're going to be running Connect Phones at more than one site, we're going to choose Local and Remote. So all the phones can use our Line 1 that we've set up on this phone if they want to make a call. For multi-site operation, we need to get the Connect ID, which is the unique number assigned to each one of your phones, from one of the phones at another site and enter it into this phone. I'm going to start out with an eight-digit fictitious number here. If we were setting up multiple phones right now, we could pick another extension that we'd already completed and enter it here in the copy from extension feature. This will drastically reduce the time to set up a group of phones. It will take all the feature key settings, system settings, and media settings and pull them from an existing phone, copying them to this phone. This is our first phone, so we're not going to do that. Next piece is, for our email account, we need to set up an outbound server so that the Connect phone knows how to send those emails out. So we're going to set it up for our fake domain name here. And for our account, we know that authentication is not required. If your email account requires authentication, you would click on the checkbox, enter your username and password, and then proceed. For us, we don't need to do that today, so we'll move on. Time zone is simply picking our time zone. Make sure the phone picks up the correct time. We're going to go central. And now we're going to set a password for the user account on the phone. And we confirm that twice and the admin password for full access to all the settings on the phone. We confirm that twice as well. Finally, we need to check off several terms and conditions to match the user agreement and accept those terms to move forward to the final step. This is where we review all the settings that we've just made on the phone, browse through and make sure everything is set up correctly, and we can either print this sheet off to have a record, which would include a printout of our password so we can keep track of those, or confirm that we already have it printed and move on to the next setting. Now we're done the setup, all we have to do is click the update button and within the next 30 seconds the phone will reboot, reload the settings and we'll be ready to go on to the next step. 
We've now entered all of the settings and we're about to click the update to finish the setup wizard. The phone's now started up. It's grabbing time from the time server based on the time zone settings you picked in the setup wizard and is ready to roll.